Today, I want to share with you why you have been practicing the pentatonic scale wrong. I'm kidding. I really am kidding. I just want to say that there is no right way to approach anything in life, really. It's whatever works for you, and if you find a way that works for you that helps you reach all of your goals, amazing. But I do think that there is an approach to take where you only have to learn two positions of the pentatonic scale to really have true mastery and unlock the fretboard of the guitar. So I've come across a lot of guitar players struggling with learning how to play the pentatonic scale all over the neck in five different positions, playing every possible combination of the five notes of the pentatonic scale. But I don't know if you have to put yourself through that. I almost feel like if you start with these two positions of the pentatonic scale, maybe down the road you could learn all five. But if you start by learning all five, it makes it really difficult to have a solid understanding of what exactly you're playing. So in this lesson, I'm gonna share what my personal approach is and hopefully I can change that if that's an issue you are struggling with. So I think the key to really using the guitar to its full potential is always knowing where the root note is when you're playing a scale. And so I wanna show you how to play the pentatonic scale with an E string root and an A string root because with just those two scale shapes, you're gonna be able to cover all of this part of the neck. And that's pretty good if you ask me. And you'll still know exactly what notes you're playing. All right, so the first position that I'm gonna show you with the E string root is what people commonly associate with being the first position of the pentatonic scale as far as resources available to musicians and people learning music. And let's say we're in A. We wanna play the A minor pentatonic scale. First step, find A, your root note, here at the fifth fret. And now we're going to build the pentatonic shape from that point. So 5th fret, 8th fret on the E string, 5th fret, 7th fret on the A string, 5th fret, 7th fret on the D string, 5th fret, 7th fret on the G string, 5th fret, 8th fret on the B string, 5th fret, 8th fret on the high E string. But let's say you want to extend that shape a little further and get a few extra notes on the top of the scale. When you get to the G string here, you can slide on up to the 9th fret, and then on the B string, 8-10, and then 8-10 on the high E string. So I think the first step to really internalizing this scale is, of course, just play through it. You know, looking at diagrams or tabs or written notation, whatever works best for you, that's, of course, a good place to start. And then, once you get more comfortable with it, you can try using this scale in an actual musical context, because I feel like you can stand outside the pool for as long as you want and intellectualize how to jump into the pool and swim and all of that, but you're never really going to truly learn how to react in that situation until you jump in the pool and figure it out for yourself. So I think the best way to actually figure out how to use this scale to make music is to practice in a musical context. Like for example, playing over a backing track and then seeing if you can start experimenting with how you play the scale. So you get really comfortable playing it, let's say. See if you can find little melodies in it. By changing the order. Or the phrasing of what you're playing. And I think that's really going to go a long way as far as how to master the scale. So I actually made a funky little backing track for you to play along to. You can access it in the members section of the Guitario website. And here are some examples of how you can practice playing along to a backing track. So I'm just gonna start by playing through the scale. Now I'm gonna try adding the extension. Now let's see if I can come up with any melodies. So 
that's all just using the A minor pentatonic scale. So a lot of people might already be familiar with the shape and they might actually practice in this manner as well. But where a lot of people maybe go wrong or make things more complicated than they need to is once they've learned the shape pretty well, they'll move on to the other four positions of the minor pentatonic scale. But the thing is, penta means five, right? So the pentatonic scale, no matter where you move it on the neck, is the same five notes recycled over and over and over again. So I think it's probably more important to spend your time really mastering you know, just one part of the neck to start with so that you can keep things simple and accessible. And let's say I want to find a sound like this. I know where to find it. Because in theory, I can play that lick so many different places on the neck, but when I'm improvising in the moment, if I'm caught thinking about, oh, now I'm in position four or I'm in position three and I don't really know where the root is, I don't really know what I'm playing exactly, it's going to be really hard to you know, shut off the technical side of my brain and just focus on making beautiful and soulful music. So I think keeping things accessible, thinking I'm in A, here's A, can build the shape from there. Then let's say the song moves to D, D minor, you can say, well, there's D. Now I can build the shape from here. Oh, now the song moved to G. There it is. Keep things simple for yourself. You'll know exactly where to find what you're looking for. And then eventually this can build to you knowing how to add other notes to the scale. Like if I want a major blues sound, I'll know where to find that lick. Exactly the notes and the colors I'm looking for. And this, strategy and uh, approach carries on all the way to really complex harmony. And it's what I use even when I'm playing over kind of crazy jazz standards. So that's the approach I've taken to be able to jam in you know, a lot of different situations, a lot of different key changes, while still being able to find exactly the notes I'm looking for without having to get caught up in worrying about if I'm about to hit a wrong note. I know where the notes are that I'm looking for. I know how to find them. I know how to find other notes from the minor pentatonic scale, using it as a starting point. And I think that's just the most efficient and easy way to make the scale musical. So that's why you only need to know two positions of the pentatonic scale. Because let's say you're playing here and you want to go play some higher sounding notes you can start the scale from the A string root. So I know A is here on the fifth fret of the E string. It's also here on the 12th fret of the A string. And now let's build our other pentatonic shape. And as far as the universal pentatonic shape positions go, I think this is position four. That's what people usually call this one. Uh, but I like to think of it as the A string root pentatonic shape. And very similar to the last one, you have 12, 15 on the A string, and then 12, 14 on the D string, 12, 14 on the G string, 13, 15 on the B string, 12, 15 on the high E string. And then, if you really wanted to, I played that wrong. That's what you don't want to do. What you want to do is when you get to the bottom, if you want, add 15, 12 on the low E string. And now you have all of this part of the neck covered. And again, go through the same process of internalizing exactly what you're playing. So you can add all the colors you want. Eventually you can start adding outside notes because you'll internalize. Ah, that's the minor third. There's the second. And you'll know how to find that color without having to, you know, in the moment, sort through your mind. Oh, I'm in position three. I don't know what notes I'm playing. Yeah. And maybe you'll get there one day and you'll know the second position, third position and fifth position of the pentatonic scale really well. And that could be a great thing to work towards. But I feel like that should be a later step in your playing, in my opinion, at least. And then let's say you know these regions of the neck really well in the key of A, let's say. Well, you can take this first position and move it up the octave, move it up 12th frets, and you can find it here at the 17th fret and play literally the exact same shape. 
And now you have all of this covered. So A is kind of a weird key in the sense that if I want to move this pentatonic shape down the octave, I am going to have to use some open strings. But as you can see here, I now have all of these parts of the neck covered. And I also know exactly what notes I'm playing. Again, this works in every key, right? Because all you have to think is, well, I'm in the key of G. There is G where I can build my root. There is G on the A string. That's where I can build the scale as well. I can play it here as well. And so on, so forth for every key. So again, I want to emphasize, this is all about knowing where the root note is so that you could be playing over a track down the road that's changing keys left, right, and center, and you'll know where to find all the notes you're looking for. So moving forward from this video, if this is a process that works for you, I would spend some time really internalizing root notes, you know, especially on the low E string and A string, because that's where a lot of scale shapes and chord shapes can be built from. Beyond that, you know, learning your intervals and understanding the guitar in this way. I know it sounds scary, but I really think that is the number one best way to learn complex music theory and harmony on the guitar. Or even if you're not interested in theory, know where to find the exact sounds you're looking for. Because the sound of going from a minor third to a fourth in the minor pentatonic scale sounds the same in every key as far as, you know, the color of those notes. So it's really worth knowing. And just to give you a quick bit of information, the minor pentatonic scale can be distilled into root, minor third or flat third, fourth, fifth, flat seven, and that's it. All of these shapes are built just from those five intervals. So that could be a great way to practice the scale, you know, internalizing those intervals that you're playing. And that's definitely a topic I'll cover further in videos in the future. So I'm gonna play you out with the jam track again, just playing the way I interpret the concepts that I spoke about in this lesson. And feel free to leave a comment down below of maybe your approach to understanding the guitar and particularly the pentatonic scale. I hope you have a wonderful day and that maybe this showed you another approach to learning the pentatonic skills that you hadn't considered yet. So, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.